On the first example, we want to graph the polynomial function, and so we, we can notice that it is not multiplied out. It's in factored form. So what might be helpful is to expand the expression out where you have p of x is equal to an x times an x. So individual powers you can expand. And then I have the 2x plus 7, and then I have x minus 8 how many times? Three, Three times. So until you really get the hang of it, this is a good visual to see the, the way it really would be. Now if I multiplied it out, the degree would be coming from all of these x's, the product of them. So x times x times x times x times x times x is x to the 6. So it's a 6 degree. That is an even degree. All even degrees will have m behavior like x squared. So it rises and rises. So you can either draw a little picture or you can say it rises and rises. Any questions on that? Okay. Find the zeros, list the multiplicity. So now that I have it expanded up here, I'm going to set each factor equal to zero and solve. So I get x equals zero how many times? Twice. What happens for even multiplicities? Bounce. Bounces off the point. Okay, then I get x equals negative 7 halves one time. x equals 8 three times. For odd multiplicities, it will just cross through it. So the three times, you won't see anything bouncing. It just passes through the point. Yes. So the x twice, is that where the um, x squared comes in? Yep. Okay. x squared is x times x. You get x equals 0 for each x. So those x you would. X cubed to be x equals 0 three times. Okay, so find the y-intercept. So this is p of 0. You're evaluate, evaluating the function at 0 and plugging 0 in for all the x's. And so I get 0 squared times 2 times 0 plus 7 times 0 minus 8 cubed. You know what? I'm not even going to plug in to those groups because when I multiply by 0, 0 times anything is what? Zero. 0. So you can just say the answer is 0, and it would have been obvious when you found this up here, x equals 0, and you plot that point. So now let's go ahead and plot the intercepts, the zeros that we've found. So I have negative 7 halves is negative 3.5, x equals 0, and x equals 8. Then we're supposed to sketch our end behavior. So it rises and rises on the ends, and then I fill in the curve, and it bounces when I hit zero. Okay, so I'm going to graph down. It's going to pass this way, come up to zero and bounce, and then it passes through the eight like that. So it's kind of a W-shaped graph when you're done. Any questions on that? Okay. All right, so now... Second one. I wanted to give you one of each to show you um, the difference between the way the polynomials can be written. The first one was in factored form. This polynomial is not factored. And so when it's not factored, when you actually have it multiplied out, the degree is the highest one you see. Do not add them up. So this is a third degree. So third degree is like x cubed. It's going to fall to the left and rise to the right. And the leading coefficient is positive, so it matches x cubed. Find the zeros. Okay? You have to factor this one. So count your terms. How many terms are there? Four terms. How do we factor four? Grouping. So I'm going to do that um, down here. So I group x cubed plus x squared plus, put the negative inside, negative 9x minus 9. Factor out an x squared, and you get x plus 1. Yep. Factor out a negative 9, so the negative comes out, and so when I go up here and divide by negative 9, I get positive x plus 1, which is what I wanted. Then I have my common group, which is x plus 1, and my other group is x squared minus 9, which factors because it's a difference of two squares. Because when you get an x squared group, you can probably break it down again. So x plus 1 times x plus 3 times x minus 3. So a difference of two squares factors opposite signs like that. Okay, now that it's completely factored, you look at those groups and find your zeros. The first group gives me x equals 1. How many times? Oh, not 1. 
negative 1, 1 time, I get x equals negative 3 once and positive 3 one time, all one time. How do we find the y-intercept? Plug in 0 for x, so it's p of 0, 0 to the third plus 0 squared minus 9 times 0 minus 9. All those zeros go away. What am I left with? Negative 9. So p of 0 equals negative 9. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 9. It just gives you another point to plot. <coughs> okay, so I plot the negative 1 for x, negative 3, positive 3, and my y-intercept at negative 9. Now you sketch your end behavior from step one. It falls to the left and rises to the right. And it crosses through all the points. So go back to the left side and you just come up, turn back down and pass through negative one, go down through the y-intercept, and then finish the graph. And that's the shape that you should have gotten for that polynomial function. <laughs>